Hi, this is Pam from the Birch Cottage blog. Welcome to my video tutorial where I'm going to demonstrate how to machine embroider on watercolor paper so you can create these beautiful custom one-of-a-kind greeting cards. Now let's take a look at the supplies that you will need. Of course you're going to need some watercolor paper and I recommend 140 pound weight watercolor paper. You'll need some colored paper that's going to kind of serve as the border for your embroidery design. You'll need cardstock for the actual card, some cutaway stabilizer, painter's tape, machine embroidery threads, 5 by 7 inch envelope, and you will also need some glue or double sided tape. And then the design that I'm using in this video is from Designs by Juju. It's called Vintage Sketch Blooms. Um, and I will leave a link to that design below. Please be sure to visit Designs by Juju. I really like her embroidery designs. And now for the tools that you will need for this project, of course you're gonna need an embroidery machine, some embroidery scissors, a paper trimmer, paper scissors, a ruler, a pencil, and a bone folder will help you to make nice creases in your paper. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to load our cutaway stabilizer into our 5x7 hoop. And I will leave you a link below also to the stabilizer that I'm using. So once we have the stabilizer hooped, we need to get our paper ready. I'm going to start with my watercolor paper, and we want to trim this down to four and three quarter inches wide by seven and three quarter inches high. If you don't have a paper trimmer here, you can measure using a ruler and a pencil and then cut with a pair of scissors. I use this paper trimmer all the time. I do highly recommend it. Now this green, we're going to trim to five inch wide by seven inch high and this is the paper that I'm actually going to use behind my embroidery design that will serve as kind of a border for that design. And now I'm trimming the actual card stock itself. We want that to be 10 inches wide by seven inches high because when we fold the card it's going to be a nice five by seven uh, greeting card. So we have all of our papers ready. We can set those aside. And now we're ready to center our card, our watercolor paper onto the embroidery hoop. So I'm just gonna make a mark on my watercolor paper and find the center of it, both horizontally and vertically, and then mark that. And then I'm going to place the watercolor paper in the center of my embroidery hoop. So I'm just still finding the center. There you go. I'm going to place a mark there. And then um, I will place this paper in the very center of my embroidery hoop. And once I have it centered, I'm going to use some painter's tape to secure that paper in place. You don't really need as much painter's tape as what I'm demonstrating here. Maybe just a small piece at the top and a small piece at the bottom or a couple of small pieces on the corners because once you stit, start stitching, the stitching will hold the watercolor paper in place. Okay, so we have that all taped down and I'm just ready to load my hoop and then I'm going to uh, load my embroidery design in my machine, make sure I'll make some adjustments to get it centered, and then I will start stitching. Now, one of the things I like to do as my embroidery design is stitching out is I like to trim those jump threads as they are created. So you just need to keep an eye on your embroidery machine and when you see those jump threads being made, and certainly when you switch out uh, thread colors, you're going to want to uh, trim off those jump threads as well and trim off the beginning threads. And again, that's just what I like to do so I'm not stitching over the jump threads. I like to trim those as the machine stitches them out. So once my design is stitching, I'm going to go ahead and get my cardstock ready. So I will take my 10 inch by 7 inch piece of paper and I will fold it in half. I like to use this bone folder to make a nice crease. And then I'm going to take glue and put it on the back of my colored cardstock. For me, it's this green and white polka dot cardstock. And I'm just going to apply glue all over the back of this so I can adhere it to the front of my cardstock for my card. 
This, um, you don't have to do this step. This just creates a nice little border design behind um, my embroidery design. So with my greeting card, I'm gonna open it up so I have the front of it, and then I'm going to line up the colored paper with the edges of my greeting card. This is the front of the card, so make sure, you know, that's the front that you're dealing with. And then just apply some pressure and smooth that all out. And then you can let that dry while your embroidery design is embroidering. Okay, so once that design is done, we can take it off the machine, unhoop it. This is what it looks like. So I'll go ahead and unhoop my design and um, I'm going to use some scissors to trim away the cutaway stabilizer from the back of the cardstock or from the back of the watercolor paper. And just take um, your scissors. Uh, for some reason, I tried using my embroidery scissors, which really didn't work quite as well. So I just have these little pair of Fisker scissors that I like to use to help me trim real close to my embroidery design. So I'll trim it completely around and then I'll go back in and move some of the excess uh, stabilizer between the design or around the design. The leaves there, you can see what I mean. I like to remove as much of the extra stabilizer as possible. And then once I've done that, I am ready to glue this design onto the front of the card. So I'm just going to take my glue bottle here. And this is just a fine tip uh, glue bottle that I have some Elmer's Craft Glue in. And I'm going to apply glue all over the design, including the back of the embroidered design itself. I like to start with the card stock and get it on there. And then I will take my design and place it right and center it over the green card stock that I have on the front of my greeting card. Then I'll apply some pressure to get that on there real well. Just smooth it out all around. And again, you don't have to use the green, uh, you know, the card stock for the border of the card. Um, but I like the looks of it. So now I'm applying some pressure to that card. I'm gonna place this case along with my iron on top of it, and that will help it to smooth out nicely while it's drying to be nice and flat. Now I like to take an envelope and trim a trace around it onto the back of a piece of colored cards or colored paper. So that's what I've done here, and then I'm just applying some glue, and I'm going to insert this into my envelope to create a nice colored uh, flap on the inside of my envelope. It just adds a nice little decorative touch to these greeting card envelopes. And I'll press that down nicely. And then I like to insert something into the envelope to keep it kind of separated so that the glue doesn't dry and you know stick to the envelope and then I have a sealed envelope. So here is my finished greeting card. And the envelope. And again, I use my bone folder to help fold down along that fold on the envelope as well. These are really easy to make, and everyone that I've made them for just loves these embroidered greeting cards. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you found this helpful, be sure to like it, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and please come over and visit me on the Birch Cottage blog for more creative ideas. Thank you.